hello. Welcome back to the Quality Matters Daily Dive. This is Kyle Chambers with uh, Texas Quality Assurance, where quality management gets simplified. Today, we're following up from yesterday's discussion, which if you're new to this, haven't checked it out, we are live streaming on LinkedIn and Rumble. So all of these past videos can be over at Rumble. If you're not familiar with Rumble, it's pretty much the same thing as YouTube, but uh, their algorithms and everything is a little more friendly, a little easier for uh, some content creators to hop on. So make sure to subscribe over on Rumble and follow us there. But uh, today we're following up from yesterday a little bit, and we're going to be talking about risk-based thinking. So risk-based thinking, when the 2015 edition of the ISO 9001 standard came out, was kind of this bombshell that threw everyone for a loop and truthfully is still throwing folks for a loop today. Um, a lot of folks have made the kind of connection saying, well, 9001 is now a risk management standard. It's not. <clears throat> they want to try to treat it in ways that I don't think the standard prescribes, nor is often required for most businesses, especially small and mid-sized businesses, to operate effectively. So let's take a look here then at the standard itself. Now, again, we're using 9001 for all of these, but this idea of risk-based thinking occurs in all what they call Annex SL standards. Maybe I should talk about that for just a second. So Annex SL, simplified version, effectively leading up to the 2015 edition of ISO 9001, ISO kind of realized that they've got standards formatted in all sorts of weird kind of funky ways. And so Clause 6 may correspond to 7 over here, which corresponds to 5 over there. So they really tried to streamline and simplify a lot of this. And they did, for the most part, a pretty good job. The, the idea of race-based thinking is incorporated in all of these different, as they call them, Annex SL standards. So you'll see ISO 45001, we got it. ISO 14001, we got it. Of course, 9001 and others. So let's take a look at the standard here. So ISO 9001, let's come down here to risk-based thinking. Now, at first, when you take a look at risk, you're going to kind of think, okay, well, you know, this is its own new process. These are brand new requirements that we've never had before. So let's take a look here at Clause 6.1 under planning. Now, to be clear, this is under planning, which, uh, you know, I said a little bit different context for us as we read the standard. But it says when planning for the quality management system, so that means this is something done ahead of time. This isn't necessarily a reactionary or an action. You know, if we're looking at the PDCA cycle, this is very much in the planning phase. So our risk may get re-updated after we take an action, which we know from yesterday's video is a corrective action. So this is definitely in the P of the PDCA cycle. So when planning for the quality management system, the organization shall consider issues referenced in 4.1. We're looking at context, the organization, internal, external issues, and determine the risk and opportunities that need to be addressed. Now, this creates a real fun crossover point when we're taking a look at like the ISO 45001 and 14001 standards. 45001's occupational health and safety, 14001's environmental management. What we want to do is we want to give assurance that the QMS can achieve its intended results, enhance desirable effects, basically function as QMS is supposed to function. It says the organization shall plan actions to address risk and opportunities. Now, to be clear here, folks, risk and opportunity are not different. They're one in the same. So if we're talking about risk, assume I'm talking about opportunity. If I'm talking about opportunity, assume I'm talking about risk. You might say, Kyle, that sounds absolutely crazy. Well, I've got a coaster here. This side, or maybe so it's a little more clear for you guys. We got Texas. This side, we got Cork. Either way, it's a coaster. This is not a different coaster from this. It's the same. Two sides of the same coin. So the idea being that a risk is we know of something that if not acted upon will have a negative consequence. Okay. An opportunity is something that if acted on will have a positive consequence. Okay. So you're still thinking, well, Kyle, those sound different. Let's take it one step further. That risk once mitigated was an improvement. So that risk is an opportunity for improvement. That opportunity not acted on is a risk for loss. So again, they're one and the same. It just depends on how we're looking at it in that very moment. So are we looking at the cork side? 
We're looking at the color side. Either way, same thing. So we have to have, we have to plan on actions to address risk and opportunities. Okay, so the addressing of the risk and opportunities doesn't actually occur in what most folks use a risk register. It's just a plan. We want to make sure that we can integrate and implement actions into the quality management system. That's kind of the definition of an action. You know, again, check out yesterday's video. That's the definition of an action and evaluate the effectiveness of these actions. Now, hmm, where have we seen that before? That's going to be down here in clause 10.2. Again, I wish they'd remove the term nonconformity from it. It's just corrective action. Corrective actions require us to evaluate the conformity of these actions. All right. So if you read through the standard with a keen eye, well, let's scroll back up here. Then, you know, you, you start to understand that maybe actions to address risk and opportunities really isn't something all that different. It just wants us to be a little more proactive about problems rather than fully reactionary, which makes sense. Now, the language in it, the way it was distributed kind of confuses people. But I'll be honest, I'm, I'm really oftentimes bothered by how much it confuses folks. Because this idea of risk-based thinking is not brand new by any means. Um, I don't agree with the uh, interpretation of the standard that we're about to read that it is fully implicit. Um, but it just makes sense. If you have a quality management system, you're going to make certain that you're being proactive as well as reactive. It's just that simple. So let me scroll down here and I'll pull it back up on the screen. Doo -doo -doo. This is from the same standard. This is just in the annex. Now, to be clear, this is not auditable. So if your auditor is trying to leave you a finding on something, you can come to A.4, um, which you should have read as well. But, you know, this isn't auditable, so they can't hold you accountable to this. But they actually do a decent job of explaining risk-based thinking here. So, and we, we addressed this yesterday a little bit as well. But if you weren't watching, here's some good stuff. The concept of risk-based thinking, they say, has been implicit in previous editions of the international standard. I disagree there, but it's implicit, maybe not in the standard. It is implicit in a quality management system. I don't think the standard did a very good job of addressing it before, but it's just what a quality management system should and ought to do. Okay. The international standards, uh, specific requirements for the organization to understand the context, 4.1, determine risk and planning, 6.1, we just read through. This represents the application of risk-based thinking to planning and implementing a quality management system processes and will assist in determining the context of document and information. All right. So we're going to look at risk so that we make certain that we're acting in accordance with the context for our organization. If you don't have any hazardous chemicals, there's no sense in evaluating risk for hazardous chemicals. So we have to look at context of the organization. Um, and that also means that we can put a little bit of a real world lens in there. Um, while a meteorite impact is a risk that could you know, cause you problems, it's just don't think most of us would need to put meteorite impact on our risk registers. So we get to use a little bit of real world common sense here. I know it's a little uncommon, but let's, let's try to do it. Um, the key purpose of the quality management system is to act as a preventative tool. Well, yes, absolutely. That is the case. Consequently, this standard does not have a separate clause or subclause for preventative action. All right. So now we're getting to the real meat of it here. The purpose of identification of risks are to pre, be preventative in problems. This is an input into your corrective action process for preventative actions. The concept of preventive action is expressed through risk-based thinking and formulating quality management system requirements. That is just extra garbly goop that really doesn't tell you anything other than, hey, you got to do it. Um, so as we kind of go through here, we really start to realize that risk-based thinking isn't its own process. And unfortunately, it's treated this way a lot of times. And unfortunately, I've seen a number of times where the auditor treats risk-based thinking as a completely separate process. And they'll want to see your procedure on risk-based thinking. They want to see your log for it. They want to see your follow-up actions. They want to see your records for it. Blah! Throw it all out the window. We don't care. 
the most most organizations need to do is have a simple risk register that was filled out at the start of the formal development of the management system and you identify known risk and this gives you a little bit of a, a, a leg up identify known risk you've already mitigated right so let's say you're a weld shop well great do you have pve for your welders yeah hey fantastic you've got a risk that you've already mitigated um, but what you want to do is you want to identify the risk that you have, where it's at, what department, what area, what activity we're working in. Then you want to identify, is there a requirement associated with that? And we get that from clause 6.1 here, right? So, you know, why do we have a requirement there? And then what we're going to want to do is say, well, what are we going to do about it? Now, this is where people tend to get a little more complicated than necessary and beneficial. So if your remedy to this is, well, we already have XYZ procedure written, procedure blah, 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 is used for mitigation of this risk. Fantastic. Perhaps um, you issued a corrective action to resolve it. Well, that corrective action, by the way, does that not, I don't know, have an evaluation of effectiveness in it? No need to demonstrate the evaluation of effectiveness in your risk register. It is a pointer to everywhere else in the management system to go. Just point, 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 point. It doesn't actually do anything. It's just part of the planning process. It just points to everywhere you need to go. So you kind of think about that. Like if you're taking a, a, a trip somewhere, you have your map. Your map just points to where to go. You know, you, your map doesn't tell you everything that needs to be done. You don't re-record on the map, ate lunch here. You don't re-record on the map. There was a road, you know, there was a traffic issue here. It, it just points you in the direction where to go. That's what a risk register is. This is our own internal way of pointing where we're going to go. And that winds up resulting in document and information, which the standard itself says is an output of risk-based thinking, and actions, which is an output of risk-based thinking, if we look at it as a process. So it really only has two outputs, document and information, and actions. And you need to record a list of these. That's it. Risk-based thinking is not horribly complicated. It is not something brand new to the quality management world. We are not developing a risk management um, standard here. We're just making some basic, simple documentation. So that's it. That's all I've really got for the fundamentals of risk-based thinking. So it is not a new process. The terminology is definitely new to the standard and confuses the crap out of everyone. But truthfully, we've all been doing something like this all along the ways anyways. All we're having to do now is, for, you know, make this a little more formal. Here's a register, which it actually doesn't call for a register, but it's my recommendation of known risk identified up front. And then as you generate corrective actions, log those corrective actions back in your risk register so that you have a good place to go find everything. Review through the management review. And we've taken what some folks make many hours a week of a process probably only about four or five hours of effort a year past the first year. So keep it simple. Have fun. Let me know if you have any questions. Feel free to reach out to me uh, personally through LinkedIn, email, whatever the case may be. Love to chat with you and answer any questions. Y'all have a great day.